There we have them, and yes, this is not a mistake. Manuel bringing the Marth Max strategy. We didn't even really uh, pick it up on the deck breakdown because, of course, it was one of the other decks, but we didn't even realize that there's still a Marth Max deck in the tournament. And then while we were checking for the deck, we were like, there's actually Marth Max still in the tournament. And the place was pearly, so that's a perfect featured match here for top 32. Yeah, and if you have paid close attention. Oh, God. That's what not is, uh, what, what a Marth Mech deck is supposed to do. <laughs> I was so excited. Marth Mech is one of my favorite decks in Yu-Gi-Oh! Also at the moment, and every time I get to cast one of those, they just brick. So that is not the most ideal start. The crowd with a bit of a sarcastic sense of humor. They're applauding the set, set one monster pass. <laughs> a lot of fans, of course, for Adrian Durzon. He has tried to go to the World Championship for so many times, so maybe today is his day. Maybe he makes his way into the top four of this tournament. I mean, he that's a sign, right? He only has to win a couple of games from now on. And this game is starting off quite strong for him. And we're going to get the My Friend Pearly here through the Pearl Lily. Now we are going to show three memories. Yes. It is not possible anymore to go for triple delicious memory because that card now with the newest Forbidden and Limited list is indeed limited, but we can still go for others. Let's see which ones he is revealing here. When you're going second, I feel like happy memory is the is the premium pick. Yeah, I true. think that's what I see Adrian uh, fishing out of his deck, but I guess we'll have to... Yeah. So oh. there is delicious memory and I think double happy memory. So he still tries to get the delicious memory just in case. It might also be that he already has one happy memory here in hand. So... He gets that one. I mean, if you're going second, you really want to have the combination of happy memory and delicious memory to get the maximum amount of attack and the maximum amount of attacks. Yeah, you oh, get he deep. did get the delicious memory. Only the one up, but he found the card from the triple reveal of my friend Pearly. Basti, I think that happened every time we casted a Pearly match. Also at German like Nationals. German Nationals. Always the delicious memory. It feels like this card is not limited, but just going to fight its way every single time. We can just discard the Dark Ruler no more. Would have not been that impressive in this matchup anyways, but of course, now that there are no monsters to negate, we just don't have to focus on that. Beautiful collected rare pearly right here. That is a very pretty cat. And we're going to use the effect of pearly. Do we hit? There is the field spell right away. So yes, indeed, we do hit. Stray Pearly Street is being added to his hand. So it's nice, because in the beginning it looked like Stray Pearly Street wasn't really a card people were even considering to play. You were playing uh, a lot of other cards, but not the field spell. But now it has become a triple choice. Or like, he, oh, oh, I just really? read the Triple Tactics Talon in his main, and it also Triple Tactics Frost. But yes, he's also playing triple Stray Pearly Street. It is nice now, I guess, having that extra value of being able to fish out the any pearly spell from your deck because now it can be very hard otherwise to access that delicious memory and there we go there is a purely plump being summoned how easy is it for the pearly deck to put 8,000 damage in. pretty easy pretty i mean easy. You know, it has been used as a blind go second deck recently that's just super super good at uh ending the game in the first turn uh for example marcus yonder top german nationals with it so i think it is definitely capable so I, I feel like the easiest way to do that in the past was with multiple copies okay. of Delicious Memory, but okay. That We're was quick! Adrian Durson has an easy game number one here. Not even five minutes have surpassed in this top 32 match, and he's already up a game. Yeah, I mean, there was not that much that he had to overcome, right? <laughs> that was just a set monster, which might have been a decent play in 2005, but this is not what we're doing right here. No, and a, a play from Manuel there just... Rather than because the the monster was going to be banished with delicious memory, so yeah. not delicious memory, the um, the plump. So yeah. rather than showing Adrian what card he's running, because he's running a very Smart. spicy deck, so sure, yeah. might be worth just taking that small advantage into game two if you don't think you're going to win game one by just concealing your deck choice from your opponent. So, of course, first of all, we're hoping for Manuel that he opens more engine now in yeah. game number two. But on top of that, we can, of course, check what he's about to bring in from his side deck to support the non-engine part of his deck. And uh, there's anti-spell fragrance. And Pearly is a deck with so many spell yeah. cards. And yes, there are a bunch of quick play spells which you can chain to the anti-spell. Well, let me tell you, it still hurts a lot when that anti-spell resolves versus a Pearly deck. And besides that, there's actually in the side deck the arrival Cybers at Ignister, which I think is a pretty, pretty interesting decision. 
Yeah, that's a really cool side deck card. I wonder if there's a specific deck he wants to side that in. That maybe maybe he's found a deck that just doesn't really have a good answer to it. So, for example, if you play against Cash Tiro, they can very easily out it with the Scareclaw Cash Tiro. Yeah. But maybe if there are other decks, I don't know how easy it is for Pearly to answer it. But um, maybe, make a, maybe make a big monster with I mean lots the, of materials. Or yeah, something exactly. Like that. You can just make it bigger and bigger and bigger, and then at some but point you how can big just does be it able. get with just one delicious memory? Ah, uh, fair enough. But you can just add multiple, multiple, multiple materials, yeah. right? But you have to crash a couple of times so you lose life points. Yeah, it, it might be interesting. It might Difficult be a card one. we're uh, seeing being sided in here. Um, we can side deck. We can see the players side decking. I think so far there was no card being exchanged from the extra deck on the side of Manuel. So. Uh, let's see. But on the other hand, Adrian Dusun already featuring a bunch of great going second cards in his main deck. As I said, there's triple, triple tactics talent. There is triple, triple tactics thrust. Cool. And on top of that, there is uh, cards such as Herald of the Abyss, evenly matched in a side deck. And one card that is pretty interesting to me is there's a side deck Kishira Arisod, which is not going to come in here, but just in general, I'm curious about that. I'm wondering if maybe you side deck it against Kashtira, and then if they use a Shangri Era on your turn, you can take it with talents and yep. turn it into an Arisod, totally. something Absolutely. like that. I think that is 100% the way. And uh, there's also Bestials, which of course are huge versus Marth makes since the beginning uh, of days. And uh, there are yeah. not only Bestials, there's one card that is really tough on the deck, which is Ghost oh, Bell and Haunted Mansion. True. This is the OG opponent of the deck because the Bestials you can bell yourself if you're going for a super factorial play, but a bell you can't bell. So this is the side deck is really hyper prepared for Marth Mech. I think that's. Not he really the intention of it, <laughs> but maybe this is also why Mathmec isn't performing that well because all of those decks feature so many cards just generically in the side decks that just beat Mathmec. Totally. And one thing that Manuel has going for him is that he didn't show his deck because now Adrian does not really, maybe maybe he just knows. I mean, we are in top cut, so it's possible that he has the information of what he's playing against, yeah. but maybe he just does not side all of those cards in. You couldn't know, because if you really don't know the deck, then you're just going for the generic cards. You, yeah. you like your Triple Tactics Thrust, your Triple Tactics Talents, those because are those the are deck. good versus basically everything, and you just don't really rely on the super specific cards that need to banish cards and so on. But by the looks of it, we are going to answer all of those questions. Mothmeg versus Pearly, game number two coming up. Also, I think it's worth mentioning uh, the general position of uh, Mathmeg right now, because they did lose to Mathmeg Circular on the last Forbidden Limited list, but there's also something that they just recently gained, because they now have Link, Link Decoder in the extra deck, which is honestly a really, really powerful card. And that is probably one of the reasons why Manuel was able to have success this weekend. Very good, a generic, or not really generic, but a Cybers Link One Monster. Now we are starting with something that you can't really be too happy about as Manuel, because you have to normal summon the Diameter for nothing, then special summon the Subtraction and go for an Alumbersion. Of course, this one can negate everything that his opponent does in this turn now, but only for this turn. It does have a little oh, trap. That is tries a... to Ash Blossom, but of course that is going Feels to be like negated. Feels like a big mistake from Adrian there, right? Yeah. Because this, you. You might as well just leave it until... <laughs> oh, that, um, and ooh. look at his face! He really forgot about it! He's shaking his hat. There is, of course, the diameter. You said it was there for nothing, but it was there for a very good reason, yeah. because it provided the negate here for the Ash Blossom and Joy Spring. So it was definitely worth going for that route. And now Ardrin is down to only four cards in his hand. Basti, please tell me, does Adrian... Is he maybe just a great actor who also has Nibiru in his main deck? That would be super, super or cool. Or is this really there the There is the no only Nibiru wow, at okay. all in main or side deck, so that is definitely not something we can see happening. There's Nabla now. So now that Mathmec Circle is at one, we of course have to find some new ways to play. And apparently Mathmec Nabla is going to be one of them. Is there any any uh, synchros to take advantage of? I also of was curious Gina? about that, but there's not a single uh, synchro monster in his extra deck. Okay, just it's just an extra name perhaps. So Nabla is uh, used for some combo routes where you don't get a Diameter into the graveyard and then you have to special summon out the Nabla with Alimbersion to tribute it and then special summon out 
something else. Also, this is really good because now the Sigma was special summoned from the deck and can be used later on again. It won't be banished because you have already gone through your Alan version. So, no way to get a re-special summon Sigma into the graveyard. And now yeah. we're going for a Splash Mage. There comes Splash Mage. It feels like the deck kind of does the same thing it, do it did for a while, right? You're just going to add on Heat Soul. You play a bunch of hand interactions, such as the good old Ash Blossom, Effect Veiler, Ghost Bell, Ghost Mourner, Ghost Ogre, Infinite yeah. Impermanency. I can't even stop because they're all looking, in there, there's basically. There's just a ton of interruptions there. I like, it's kind of a nice strategy, just running two of each, just to decrease the chances of drawing uh, multiple copies of one. If, if you know, if some of the newer cards, obviously, you can't use multiple copies of it. Totally, I agree. In the same turn. Yeah, I, I definitely do agree. And when they're all kind of like, do a fairly similar thing, and you're not really massively preferring one over the other. It makes sense, but we do see like three Ash Blossom, for example, because it is probably the most powerful out of those. I'm really surprised by Mathmac being in the top cut. We have seen so many Dragon Bistial players in this tournament already, and even if you're able to stop their combo with all of those hand traps, one, or if you have Belt, two Bistials stop your Super Factorial from being effective at all. Yep, and we did search the Super Factorial. And with two set cards, it's going over to the turn of Adrian Dursun. And I think we're thinking in the draw phase, and that would be a huge indicator for a potential anti-spell fragrance oh. that is just not going to be used here just oh. yet. <laughs> we're starting off with the Heat Soul, okay. Just scaring Adrian a bit there, saying, like, oh, let me just check if I have an anti-spell. I can't remember. <laughs> I mean, I don't think there would be an anti-spell, because if there was the small chance of a Forbidden Chalice in the end of Adrian. But there is, is wow, an anti okay. fragrance by Manuel! There it is, and we are, as we said earlier, going to be able to oh. chain our quick plays, and that is the sleepy memory that is being chained here. Maybe you trying to find another Ash before we flip the anti-spell fragments and force our opponent to use one of the quick play spells. You wanted him to play around the Forbidden Chalice? Yeah, <laughs> I see it now. <laughs> I love it's it. It's okay. Oh, we are going to discard the field spell. And we're going to splash that summon out. And I think one card that is really, really relevant in this situation right here, right now, is going to be the Lava Golem. It depends on how well Manuel can play yeah. around it. Because at the moment, there's only one monster on his side of the field. But of course, there are, there is a way already set in his back row to bring another monster onto the field. The problem is, immediately after the Super Factorial resolves and the Laplacian hits the field, it uses the most important effect already. That's true, yeah. So, looks like we did add Pearly to our hand, and we have not normal summoned yet, so that would be a way to extend. The thing is, if we decide to normal summon Pearly, then there is no way to actually special summon out the Lava Golem anymore, so... Yeah. I'm Let's not just see. thinking, do you like it here, the Super Factorial? Because I don't see what you're tough. using. It's tough. It's certainly tough. How is this Pearly Lily ever going to activate its effect this turn? Because you can't activate any more spells, so how are you going to get any of the other, other pearly spells into the graveyard? The anti-spell is really, really rough here. We're getting rid of the pearly, maybe even hitting the lava golem, so we, so there is no discussion about that anymore. I mean, you could just use the on-field effect of pearl lily to equip the sleepy memory uh, and itself and make a exceed monster right away, and I think you want to prevent that. Oh, you that can't here. do that because you have to rank up to a. a uh, Pearly monster that mentions Sleepy Memory, and there isn't, it hasn't been released yet. There is one oh, in the OCG, Oh, you're right, true. There's only the Sleepy Memory. Yeah, you have to have uh, one of the other ones. Oh, true. Absolutely. Good catch. We are going to, of course, get rid of the Pearl Lily, and which card in hand is going to follow? Is it going to be? It's Triple Tank wow. Talents. That card would have not done anything there. And there is still the Lava Golem in the hand of Adrian, I'm pretty sure. But we will not be able to summon it this turn because we will be normal summoning the Pearly. And let's see what we're going to hit. Or is he going to negate it? He is... I think he's not going to negate that effect. He's rather going to negate the effect of revealing a memory in hand and then exceed summoning that. Probably. So, what are we hitting? That's not a hit, but that is my friend Pearly, which also will not be able to be activated here this turn this anti spell fragrance is really putting in some work. But that oh, is going to be a Link. One, one summon. Very unusual for the deck. Oh, the Anima. Oh, oh wow. of course. Anima takes 
or it makes use of the fact that the heat soul is wow. pointing towards it and that is going to be the game here from manuel equaling the score moth makes still going strong here at the european championship 2023 in utrecht yeah doesn't smell like spells in here anymore <laughs> that was just a devastating anti-spell fragrance wasn't it i mean imperial order may be banned but it's 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 younger brother anti-spell fragrance still putting in quite a big show yeah totally and i mean uh Adrian has a tendency to play spell card decks because he was very successful with his Sky Striker deck. Now he's very successful with the Pearly deck. So it's a pretty safe bank to just randomly play anti spell versus whatever you're facing. <laughs> Good old Adrian doesn't. Do you think uh, Adrian is intending to go first with his deck? That's a very, very good question because as we said earlier, usually lately they were going second strategies with the deck. On the other hand, if people just consistently hit delicious memory off of Be My Friend Pearly, <laughs> I see no reason not to go first. <laughs> That's a good plan. <laughs> What's your going first strategy? Just hit it. <laughs> Do you think, as the Mathmec player, that you are going to be able to go first now again? Would you, as a Mathmec player, cite the anti-spell again? That's a good question. This is one of the things I've always found with sort of like going first, going second decks, can really mess with side decking yeah, patterns. Yes. Because if your opponent doesn't know, or you don't know, if you've chosen to let your opponent go first in game one, and then it gets to game three, do you know what they're going to make you do? It becomes really challenging. I think it's, it's a bit tough. I think as Adrian, you want to let your opponent go first again. You are siding in bestials as well. Your most True. important cards are side deck cards, and they also work if you draw them on your first turn, if you draw them as the sixth card. You want to bell the super factorial, and you want to druid swim on the super factorial. So I think that you might want to let your opponent start. Also, he's running so many cards that disrupt the Mathmax strategy that you can allow your opponent to go first. Also, right? just looking at his side deck, there's not a singular going first card. So if he no. would have like that going first plan post uh, siding, then there would usually be some kind of summon limit or some stuff like that. But he just doesn't have that at all. So I think I got to agree with you guys that the main plan for game three usually will just be going second. Yeah, it's a real gamble, though. Once you've seen that anti-spike, I would be very, very scared that my opponent would keep in the anti-spell. Totally, yeah, for sure. Pearly is a strategy where I think the most popular thing players are doing now is going second with it. Yeah, and I mean, on top of that, yes, we play those really impactful cards that can break the entire field, such as uh, Triple Tactics Thrust, Lightning Storm, and so on, so on, so on. But the math deck just has so many hand interactions, so you can't really take care of those. Yeah. He will draw into them with the Heat Soul and so on. And therefore, I think it's really, really tough when you're then also playing through cards such as Ghost Ogre. Ghost Ogre is a card that's not very popular at all, but Manuel has decided to play it because there's so much space in the math deck now. And this card, if you're surprised by it, it can really come in clutch because Ogre on a Transcode Talker, oh, that is tough. I mean... Yeah, but he's he's the one playing the Ghost Ogre. That is so. a good point. <laughs> but I think but Ogre on a My Friend Pearly, that exactly. is tough. Indeed, yeah, exactly, <laughs> absolutely. Or maybe like on one of the Exceed monsters that yeah. wants to transform itself into something else yeah. or so on. So there are definitely a couple of ways to do it, or like just on the Pearl Lily. And that decision has to be made now. Will we see Adrian Dilson going first or second in this third game of Top 32? It will decide on who moves on to Top 16. So let's get back into the action. Here we go, the decider in the top 32. And remember, if you are in top 16, you are really, really close to a world's qualification. Yes, absolutely. So, who is going to start things off? Both players actively looking at the hand, so you couldn't really tell. Oh. But it is indeed Adrian Dursan starting things off here. Going first with his pearly deck, starting with the pearly field spell, the good old Stray Pearly Street. Yeah, I love this card. Sometimes these, like, Extra little effects that are on field spells can catch you by surprise, just making your monsters untargetable during the turn they're special summoned. It's a really powerful effect, and it, it, you know sometimes players aren't prepared for it, because a lot of hand traps in Manuel's deck might just be switched off instantly. Totally. Oh, and I think Manuel is heavily considering to act on that activated Pearly Happy Memory. I think Pearly is one of those decks where it is kind of reasonable to just ash the first thing that happens. And they do here. Manuel decides and to he ash, pass. and yes. there's a pass! And you're passing it over to Cyberstack, that is very well known to just put 
up 8,000 damage quite easily because Axis Code Talker is super easy to make. And there's a oh. one of Mothmag Turkula being revealed! That is huge! Mothmag going crazy! He has the one off. He has the one off. No sign at mining, no small world, no. Spirit engine that goes into Alan Bershin. No, we are just going straight mm. circular, sending the Sigma, and there is a signed mining on top of it, even. Oh, oh he no. had wow. the ghost just spell as the well. bell here. So we are not even protecting ourselves from a Juris Bloom or a Magnum. Root. That Maybe is there's just another ghost bell. Oh, wow. a handshake. Adrian being disappointed. He knows his journey is over. It won't be Wells this year either. And therefore, Mothmeg moves on to top 16 in this tournament. I did certainly not expect wow. that. That was a crazy game. The anti spell fragrance in game two was absolutely massive. After Manuel just. Set a monster in game one. He just came <laughs> back from this. A, a game of just absolute blowouts on both sides. We yeah. saw, well, I mean, a, an unfortunate draw from Manuel in the first game, a devastating anti spell in the second game, and then probably quite a weak draw from Adrian in the third. But the Ash, I, w I was going to say earlier, it is reasonable to Ash just the first thing that happens from Pearly because every time I played against the deck and I didn't Ash the first thing, they just started accumulating more and more cards and you're like, okay, at which point can I just throw the Ash where it <laughs> matters again? I think Ash is one of those cards that against Pearly have either high impact or none at all and you just have to risk it, you just have to throw it immediately and maybe you win the game immediately. It worked like a charm right there, of course that makes you vulnerable to cards such as Triple Tactic Talents and so on, but as we saw Gotta right draw there, them. none of them were available to Adrian Jerson. As we said earlier, this man is got to be respected though, right? Because yeah. he's just topping every single event, he's running deep and everything, another top 32 finish here. You saw the disappointment in his eyes though, no world championship for him this year. But Manuel on the other end, still maybe on his way, one of those underdogs, just bringing an underdog deck and then going to the world championship. Two, two more games. wins only. It's two. only two more wins. That's nothing. Uh, it's two matches against a, not a lot of other very ah. hungry players. It's ah. half a local. <laughs> half a half local. Half a local, even. That's easily doable. But no, of course, as you were just saying, there's so many strong players still left in the tournament. A couple were already, of course, eliminated in top 64. For, for example, all the Dinka Bui fans, I gotta tell you, he lost his top 64 match, so he's no longer with us. But on the other end, there's still so many more. Gabriel Susi. Of course, Jonas Koschel is still in there. Two Maybe. people who are already qualified for the World Championship, so there might be a possible pass down. Yeah, well, that's very, very interesting. I don't even know what exactly is going to happen if that's going to be the case, because if you are now qualifying through the main event too by going top four, of course, you got your spot already, so... You can't go twice, <laughs> even though you want to. Can you not just you say, like, can I just have it next year, please? Oh, that would be nice. <laughs> can I just play myself round one? Is that somehow a possibility? No, it's obviously it's a, not. It's a real flex, that, isn't it? Just be like, yeah, I qualified yesterday, but I'm just going to make top four and do it again. Why not? You know? Absolutely. And I mean, the, the most impressive thing, I think, to me personally, is Jonas Koschel has just switched decks. He was yeah. like, yeah, that already worked for the World Points Qualifier. I will just now prove that this deck is also going to do it. <laughs> pretty, pretty sick. Yeah, he actually just tried out a deck in the World Championships playoff. It was actually not the deck that he played a lot with before. But someone who has played his deck a lot before, that got to be Manuel, who is running the Mathmax strategy. So we're going to give it over to Ed for the interview. Thank you, Leo. Yes, I am joined by Manuel, who's just won this top 32 feature match and is now straight into the top 16 here at the EU World Championship Qualifier. Top 16, Manuel, how are you feeling? Well, it's my first top ever, so I'm really nervous about it. So just going to draw circular again in top 16 and it's going to be fine. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> That's all we need to happen. So you've never been to a Euros and you've not, not topped any of these YCSs before, but you've not topped the Euros. I've been a lot to Euros and YCSs, I but I, I just, uh, I'm not a good player, I guess, but uh, yeah. <laughs> and that was, you said that was your first ever feature? Yeah, kind of exciting. I was kind of nervous, but it's really quiet with the headphones, so well, well. It does manage to sort of trap you out of the world, but there's a lot of pressure up there. You're on a stage in front of an audience of people. Can you hear the audience with the headphones on? Yeah, I could uh, hear them clap on the anti-spell and on the circular, so that was fine. <laughs> oh yeah, no, they, there was a lot of moments with that. So let's let's go through this. So let's talk let's talk about game one. Yeah. So at the start, a set one pass, bit of a brick. I was a really big, uh, really hard brick. So what was the hand? It was like double diameter, uh, triple tactics, Whaler and uh, the one of Nabla. 
so no play there and uh, never happened. The whole uh, Swiss never bricked, but had to happen. I bet that must have been a heck of a moment while you're up there going, this hasn't happened all day and now I'm on the stage and it happens immediately. Exactly in the future, so yeah. yeah. Mm. Well then, you, you know, you basically just thought, yeah, I'm going to scoop, we'll get on to the next one. He made the E pearly plump and you went, no, let's just, let's just get past it. I didn't, wanna, uh, didn't want him to see what I'm playing, so I scooped there. Good stuff, always smart. So there we go to game two. Adrian ashed the Alan Bershin, but it was made with diameter, so it was negated. And that you could see that he got really annoyed because he shook his head, he forgot. I think he forgot, yeah. Well, I think I had signed mining anyways to search or small world, so it wouldn't have mattered, but still, yeah. Always, always good to have the backups. And then you said like, the anti-spell fragrance, the plation. You just sort of got rid of his resources, so he scooped. And then we got onto that game three. That was, I mean, you, you were saying you can hear the audience through the headphones, but they were going crazy with everything that was happening. Clearly, Adrian didn't do great with his first hand. Instantly, you ashed the happy memory, and then you revealed circular. And from there, I think he just knew. Yeah, well, I didn't knew what to ash, because I think he played against purely, like, a lot before the band list, but they didn't know what the gameplay was now, so just through the ash, it got lucky, I guess, yeah. I mean, there was there was a handful of times where you're having to read the cards, so is this not a deck you've gone up against that much? No, no, not really. Before the band list, yes, but now I'd, it's a long time, like, it's been like a month since I last read a purely card. But I think in game three, my hand was like uh, three hand traps plus circular plus mining, so I couldn't have gone better. Oh, perfect. So let's hope you continue that luck as you go into these top 16s very close to possibly securing yourself a world's invite if you can get all the way through. Do you think you could take it all the way? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's what we like to hear. Congratulations, Manuel. Best of luck in that top 16. Do not go anywhere because we've got the top 16 feature match coming right up.